everybody. Today is the day we are going to be looking back. And I've got uh, right here, sitting here, how many of you are looking back to the day you wore a poodle skirt? Oh my gosh. And those saddle oxfords that were so uncomfortable. Oh my goodness, as a cheerleader, we had to wear them. And I don't care what you say, they were not comfortable. Spalding made them and we had to look everywhere to get them. And they were called, we called them raw raws. Well, right now we are going to raw raw back to a program today at RNA Orchards. And this weekend when I did the cobbler competition, the peach cobbler has always been everybody's favorite. But this weekend, everybody loved the strawberry. So I thought, huh, I can pull a program from the archives when I went to RNA Orchards and we did a strawberry cobbler. And that's kind of the beginning of it. So we're gonna share that. And I don't remember if that's when I was using Sprite or not, but I think it is. And what in the world gave me this idea to do a Sprite is beyond me. Sometimes things just flip into my head and then they come out. I want to remind you, um, tonight at the Historical Society in Ball Grounds, 7 p.m., please stop by and be a part of learning a little bit of the history of the Cherokee in the North Georgia mountains. It is amazing to me the people who don't really realize where that land came from that we are treasuring and preserving and protecting today. Also, I want to remind you at 11 o'clock at the Ball Ground Library on Tuesday today, you have to go and learn about Alzheimer's. You're going to be faced with it. Somebody you know is going to be faced with it. Somebody you love is going to be faced with it. And we have to get together and see what we can do. You know, if the government would quit spending our billions and billions on that open border, uh-oh, controversy, here we go. <laughs> On that open border, we could use the money for Alzheimer's uh, study and learning, for diabetes study and learning. Let's tell our politicians how we want them to spend the money. Maybe we should be writing letters to them. That might be a good idea, so let's try it. You know, when I look back at RNA Orchards, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair today if it weren't for Roger Futch and his great idea to do live television here at ETC. I had done recorded TV in Atlanta. I'd done recorded TV in Greenville. I had done that for enough time that I felt pretty comfortable with doing live TV. If you know me, you know what you see is what you get. I don't use a teleprompter. I never use a script. And when I have guests, they always say, well, do you want to pre-interview me? No, no, because then I'll be bored with it. No, but I want to remind you that ETC is a team. We are a team working together, and one of our team members is missing right now. Aaron Abbott is still in Emory University Hospital in Atlanta. He is waiting for, and we are praying for, a liver transplant for this young man. He had a liver transplant as a young, young baby, and he needs another, another transplant. So please add him to your church prayer list, add him to everybody's prayer list. If you would like to send a card to Aaron here at ETC, 1068 Progress Road, we will make sure that he gets it. I remember the overflow <coughs> of the cards that Hans Rufert got when he was in MD Anderson. They said they had never had anyone there receive as much mail as he received. So let's send to Aaron some mail. And again, you can send it to here at Progress Road, 1068 Progress Road, and we will see that he gets it. The guys will be going down to see him, and we are praying, praying, praying that he has an amazing miracle. You know, we've got Hans today, 17 years later, so those miracles do happen. And the ETC family is a praying family, and we hope that y'all will all get together and, and join us as we pray for this young man to come out of Emory with a liver that is working and everything is good. Um, there but for the grace of God, go you and I. We never know what we're going to face tomorrow. So we're going to go now to one of my favorite programs, and it was done at RNA Orchards. I did a, a recipe there. And I don't know what the rest of the program is. I have no idea because I didn't preview it. So y'all are going to get a surprise today. But we are going way back. Did you hear that, Missy? We're going way back when we were young. Not much younger, about 10 years younger. So here we go. Mr. 
is not coming in until later in the day. Is there a motorcycle ride that didn't need rain tomorrow? Yes, there's a poker run that does not need rain tomorrow. Does not need rain tomorrow. Are yes. you going to ride in this ride? Yes. Okay. Mr. Am Bates I going to ride, ride in this ride? No. I don't do motorcycles. And, and Nicholas I don't said, know why. Well, because I'm scared of the traffic. And for all you bikers, thank you for participating mm -hmm. in this. And thank you for, yeah. for signing up, turning out. It's going to be a lot of fun for y'all. Yeah. I'm going to be sitting there at the destination point waiting on you to come back with food, with lots of barbecue and lots of mm -hmm. goodies. And entertainment. I just can't do motorcycle rides in traffic. Now, I could go out in the country, and if you cleared the road, I would. But a group I of would. bikes is safer than of one bike. Maybe. Maybe. It is. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, and, and we thank you so much to everybody. Mm -hmm. And Angela truly is sitting here wrapped up in one of the, qu it's a quilt that's going to be given away tomorrow. We were going to show it, but we were going to show it, it first. But she's got to waller in it first because she's freezing to death. We also brought in the Izod men's leather jacket that mm -hmm. is going to be given away tomorrow. If you're a biker, you need this jacket because it is one warm bad it's boy. It's so soft. I know it I would have so it on soft. too, but I know you know yeah. you don't want it to smell like perfume. <laughs> yeah, I know we don't want to do that. This is going to be a great weekend. There's a lot going on. Um, I got to, first of all, take care of business, something that didn't get done early on in the week. I didn't check my email for about three days. <gasps> and yesterday oh, I girl. had 805 emails. Yeah. I 
scanned them quickly. I did not take time to read them all. I you missed, missed where you won the lottery. Yeah, I did. I missed I a birthday. I missed a very special birthday. This is for uh, Becky and Kim Burrell's grandson, Braxton. Happy birthday, Braxton Burrell, who turned three years old mm -hmm. on May the 10th. Kim, I hope you're feeling better. I know you've been through so, so much. So we will put his name in the birthday drawing. Remember, you can call up until about 9.50 today mm -hmm. and then sub submit your birthdays. And as always, we will say happy birthday to you. Yes. Now we've got a lot going on this weekend for us because it has been it has been a busy time. Um, when your friends started getting ready for this benefit, I told them point blank, don't have time to do it. Hope you do well. I'm really excited for y'all, but I had a lot going on. Well, then at the last minute, Mama, as always, jumps in. Now I have to go pick up a gun today because we're going to do a gun drawing. And this gun, Nicholas said, Mom, what kind is it? I said, one like this. <laughs> he said, Mama. I don't know. It's a Savage 17 gauge, I think, 17 with a Bushnell caliber with a Bushnell scope. Scope. Okay. So I don't quite get it all together, but I just got on board late, and we have to say Dan Elliott did. He's doing a package of racing tickets and racing goodies from Gresham Motorsports Park. Yes. And whoever wins that, I so, want to go with you. Yeah, whoever wins that, Ange wants to go. There's going to be an amazing race. He would normally be with us today. There's an amazing I race him. He going been on. on in a while. Well, he's he's busy. I know he's, he's busy. got a job. He's had the big boys at his track testing, and he's really excited about it. But this weekend. Come and be with us. Then you can leave us at 4 o'clock and you can get to Gresham Motorsports Park in time for the race. Mm -hmm. They're about two hours away from us and it is going to be a fabulous race. Um, a lot of stuff going on over there this weekend. It's kind of their big deal this year. So mm -hmm. we, want you to, we want you to go out and, and get to know Dan and the guys over there. Today we're going to do some giveaways. We're going to give away one of my cookbooks, one of the DVDs from the Basin, and one of Mark Fuller's CDs. And yesterday, a mom gave her daughter away. A mom, Jody's mom, gave Jody to Thomas, and Thomas is now, I guess, in charge of Jody. Is that what happens when you get married? I guess. Yeah, yeah pretty until much. Until they give you back. So, uh, hush now. That happened to you, didn't it? I'm sorry. <laughs> it did happen to me. They gave her back to her. They gave, they, they gave her back. They gave they you did. back to they her. They did. They did. Sorry. They That's just okay. didn't know what they were missing. I took you back. <laughs> but, but we want to say congratulations to Jody DeBoard and Thomas Morgan. They were married last night here in LJ. And if you have wedding or engagement photos you'd like for us to share, we'll be happy to do that. Why did they pick a Thursday? Because they have to work. Oh, okay. They have to work. You know, some people don't have time and, and don't want the big to-do and right. don't, you know, it just, right. it's whatever fits into your plan. That's what fit into their plan. So yeah. there you go. Well, I saw a couple the other day at the magistrate that were getting married that uh, he was fixing to go to Iraq. Iraq. Oh, wow. And so wow. They, they were just babies, though. Oh. And I was like, y'all are kids. Yeah. And then you think, he's going to fight for us. That's and right. they look so young. Well, if you have wedding photos wow. you'd like for us to share, please send them to us here at adam at etcmail.com. Or you can send them to Sherry at etcmail.com, and then I will forward them to Adam because Sherry goes to my laptop, and quite often uh, that's kind of my weekend thing, so I don't mm -hmm. always get it here in the studio. But if you could please send them to Adam at ETC Mail. We have another very special couple here. She happens to work here, and we're going to show their photograph. Uh, I think it's their engagement photo, and it's mm. a really, really pretty picture. So if you have some photos going on, it is wedding time. It is that time of year. You get wedding invitations and you get graduation invitations. Mm -hmm. Now, did your child come in town last night? Yes, my little birdie flew in, and she looked so tired, but she looked so good. Um, her test results were fine. Well, we're, we're having her back at the doctor again today because right. we weren't real impressed with that doctor at all. <gasps> Gosh, at all. Hush now. Now, this is a Kentucky doctor, y'all. Think about it. We just, well, you know. She's still got the rash really bad. She's still got fluid on her ankles. And we're just, we're wanting our doctors down here. To so, check Dr. Her Masters out. is going to check her out she's today. She's going at 10 o'clock today. Yes. yes. Okay. So, maybe we'll have some definite yes. news. We want something better. Yeah. My problem mm -hmm. was when the doctor says, looking at a a college kid who's alone in Kentucky right. without her parents. <gasps> we're checking you for lupus. Right. Well, why not just say we're going to do a little lab work? You might as well say you're going to die. No, don't I say mean, that. I mean, you know, but... that was mean. It was yeah. mean. Well, no, it's his it bedside mean. manner. Hush, hush, hush. It was his bedside manner. Well, we, well we're going to show these engagement pictures and we're going to calm Angela down because... <laughs> well, you was... know, you mama hens out there, you want to protect your children. That's right. Now there we go, that young couple was married last night here in Gilmer County, I think over at the Big Baptist Church. There you go. 
And the next one is a couple who happens to, the young lady works here at ETC. And I can't remember when her wedding is, but uh, there oh, you go. Oh, picture. Candace, yeah. That is beautiful. That Where is, is that so place? Pretty. I don't know, but that is gorgeous. That just Hannah, where is that picture taken? That is How beautiful. Neat. That is great. Who is the photographer on that? That is really, really pretty. Really pretty. Oh, my pretty. gosh. That is gorgeous. Maybe Stacy Lanning was a photographer. That's who you need to hire. That is a good, good I shot. I love that picture. Beautiful. Congratulations to both of you. And, and remember, wow. if you have events coming up, if you've tied the knot, tying the knot, got one of them big dresses bought, and you're going to be showing out and showing off, then send us your photos, and we'll be happy to share yes. them with folks. Yes. I want to read something from a kid that I love. This is one of the first teenagers that really tuned into this show. And Drew Dillard is, he is the best kid. Hi Sherry, I work at Studio One Performing Arts School. We have two locations. One location is in LJ and one is in Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. We have been open for 26 years now and still providing students with a great education in dance. Studio One has two huge shows coming up. We are presenting The Little Mermaid and The Spring Showcase on Saturday, May 29th at 2 and 6 p.m. I'd love to have, have the opportunity to come on the show with some of the staff and promote our shows along with our studio. If you have openings near May 28th, you know I do. Drew Dillard, I will preempt somebody else to have you on here. We would love to have a big celebration since we've been in business for 25 years. We can bring pictures of the studios, uh, bring some of our national medals, or just talk about some of the experiences being in business that long. We can also bring dancers. That will be great, Drew. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. If you would like some of them to perform a piece, we can do that too. We have room. We can just clean this out. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for allowing me to be on the show so many times in the past. I've enjoyed it so much. You can call me or email me. Thank you, Drew Dillard. This is one good, positive, together kid. He is from Fannin County. Let me tell you about Fannin County. They produced Christy Lindstrom. And if you haven't tuned in to Talk of the Town, I suggest you do that on Thursday nights. Last night she had the CEOs from the hospitals. We are in a community that has some great hospitals. Yes. We have some of the best medical care ever. I used to run to Atlanta if I had a cold. I used to mm -hmm. run to Atlanta for all mm -hmm. the female stuff. Mm -hmm. Used to run to Atlanta for specialists. Now all the They're hospitals, here. they are mm -hmm. here in our area and we are so blessed from the basin down to even uh, north side Cherokee. You know, yeah. we have a lot of hospitals in this area so please mm -hmm. give your local hospitals a chance. Don't do that run to the big city stuff. And, I know and Piedmont Mountainside, I can't say anything but good things about how they treated me. That's and right. And me. next week we have a doctor who's going to be here. Yeah. Everybody kept saying, oh, where's Dr. Kent? Where's Where Dr. She? Kent? Well, they we couldn't find gone. her. Well, we found her and she will be on the set with us next Thursday. Now, oh the, my gosh. The we kicker, need to get her autograph. She's so the famous. The kicker about her is she's going to be in and out of here by 9 o'clock because she's right around the corner from here on Maddox Drive and she has appointments scheduled starting at 9 and I understand she is an on time kind of gal. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get her in about 20 to 9. We're going to talk to her 15 or 20 minutes. Then we're going to have another doctor down from Fannin Regional. We are going to let you call in questions that day. You know, oh, wow. we'll, we'll only take three or four questions but we're going to take some questions because this, this concept I said, I want to call it house call. If you have a question, I want you to ask the doctor. Mm -hmm. Because quite often, I have left the doctor's office, got in my car, scratched my head, and said, what did they say? Right. And, or and I forgot to ask so-and-so. I forgot and it would be a really ask. important question to you, yeah, yeah. you know, that you want to know. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. ha I have been a little ill this week because I have a sore throat and sinus drainage, and I needed to see my doctor, who was busy, 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 busy. And I said, boy, the doctors are really booming. When all the other businesses fail, the I know. doctors are booming. I, know. I think so, a lot of stuff is stress-related, though. Maybe. I uh, think mine's pollen-related. No, not yours, oh, but yeah. I mean, a oh, lot yeah. of people now are sick, and I think it's stress-related illnesses. Right, right. Seriously. Well, there, there's a lot of stress going on in the world. But, mm -hmm. but what I've learned this week is maybe you should have two doctors. Yeah. So I thought about that, and I thought, well, maybe, because I have one doctor that I rely on for everything mm -hmm. except my pap, my go to my doctor Espy for that. I have two general practitioners. I don't. I always mm -hmm. had one doctor, but this week when I tried to get an appointment, tried to get an appointment, tried to get an appointment, mm -hmm. <gasps> I got a little discouraged. Yeah. So now I am going to become one of Dr. Kent's sometime patients. Oh, okay. I just decided. I'll have one in L J. I'll have one in J. Well, you'll have her here next Thursday if you can hold off with that pollen attack. I, bring, on a, next bring a time depressor when you come, Dr. Kent. 
But but maybe it's a good idea to have two doctors mm -hmm. because I yes. stressed over not being able to get an appointment mm -hmm. with my doctor and I thought that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, do what works for you. Next week we're going to allow you to call in some questions to the doctors. One is going to be an internist and Dr. Kent I think is just general practitioner so you could probably ask her many things. This is the time. Everybody you see, Lord, I've got a sinus infection. Uh -huh. Lord, my ears are stopped up. My right. head hurts. My throat hurts. Right. This is the time of year. I bet you a lot of her patients are going, oh, I've got this sinus drainage. Mm -hmm. I've got this headache. You so. know, you think about an internist and then a, a GP. Who has to know more? Well, then you think they both have to know about the same amount, but just about different things because she's got to know something about everything. 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 Yeah. Everything. Well, that's enormous. But then you go to an internist and you think, oh, well, they don't have to know that much. Yes, they do, oh, because yes, then once do. she sends them, then they've got to figure they it out. They go inside. Oh, they're right. in trouble. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're I in mean, trouble. it's just crazy what they have to know. Well, we have some great hospitals in this area, and this week we want to salute them. And, and don't forget to tune in to Talk of the Town every Thursday night at 730. It is recorded live here every other Thursday and then re-aired. So if you didn't get to see last night's show, you'll be able to see it again. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you a little bit of footage of the Barker Brothers. We're going to go to a couple of songs. I have a guest today. Is it going to be sideways? <laughs> no. Okay. Our DVD player has a problem. It's mad. So we're going to go to... It's sick. Oh, ha -choo! Send it to see Dr. Kent, Hannah. <laughs> we're going to go to the community calendar. We're waiting on a guest who's going to be here today. She's a very, very special lady. Mm -hmm. She's here in place of her mother, who was one of my very, very best friends in the world. Mm -hmm. Her mother was scheduled to be on here on a Monday morning. On a Sunday night, we took her out to eat. She ended up in the hospital and very shortly later mm -hmm. passed away. Yeah. So um, she had cancer. We have talked about cancer every day this week. We have to tell you early detection again yes. and again and again. We have to encourage you to get your checkups. We have to encourage you to pay attention to your body and changes in your body. Mm -hmm. That is one of the things. Um, if something changes or doesn't seem quite right, it probably isn't. Right. Hans walked with me, and thank you, Hans, so much for everything you and Brenda did for me Saturday. We were in the relay at Jasper, and um, that's one thing he said to me when we were talking, um, when we were walking and talking, walking and talking, and he said that, a year before he was diagnosed, he knew there was a problem, and uh -huh. he tried to get the doctors to do a scan, uh -huh. and they wouldn't. Because the insurance didn't because, dictate Right, and he yeah. didn't have enough of, whatever. you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And if they had only done it the year before, it would have been probably stage one. And maybe. you know your body better than anybody. Right. I mean, that's you the key know your body. Yeah. I knew something was wrong with me. Would I go? No. But now do I preach to y'all to go? Yes. 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 Let's talk about your necklace because I'm still. Uh, no, I know. I think she's she's hiding somewhere. Gonna. You know, I don't know. It's just amazing. And I've looked at it and looked at it and I laid it there last night and I thought. Wow, that lady just gave that to me, and it's so beautiful. It is beautiful. It is so My guest beautiful. had that on yesterday morning, and I said, oh, that's a gorgeous necklace. I, I said, Angela's, the cancer she has, the color is teal, right. and we love the color teal. Right. And before she left the studio yesterday, she gave me that I to give to you. I couldn't believe it. That was the I kindest was, thing. Oh, that was the kindest thing. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's beautiful. Thank and don't you. forget, there is going to be a health expo next Saturday at um, Fannin Regional. And, and that's what they were here to talk about yesterday. Right. Fannin Regional is one of the sponsors. It is all about you, your body, and your health. Mm -hmm. And, and you those are great to go yourself. to. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's, it's a great way for early screening. Well, right now, we are going to go to the community calendar. But I hope we get the DVD fixed because I really did want to feature the Barker Brothers. Maybe we can just call them and they can run down from the basin. I don't know. We'll see. And, and I got to tell y'all, last night my phone rang. There was a fire at the Nifty 50. Everybody's all torn up, all upset. It was a minor fire. Everything is fine. It was a minor fire, although the town looked like it was all going to burn up because there was like a whole bunch of fire trucks there. Everything was fine. It was a small fire. and. Me being a non-smoker is going to make this statement. I think somebody might have put a cigarette out in the trash can, but I don't know that. I'm just thinking when they tell me where it in started. In the restaurant? No, in the Open. hall, in the bathroom. So it was thought it was in but the restaurant. But you can't smoke in there. No, you can't. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, the fire got under, it was under control. It might have been done on Smoke damage. No, it was smoke damage, and it was just one of those things. I would guess 
being a guessing person and a non-smoking guessing person. Surely not. Nobody should smoke in there. Well, I just have this awful feeling. If there's smoke, there's fire. So there you go. But How everything scary. is fine. The Nifty Fifty <gasps> is fine. Good. So, so don't don't anybody panic and go have lunch with Wanda today. Yes, go have a fried Now let's pickle. go to the community calendar. Get your pad, get your pencil, write down some events to attend because there's a lot going on this weekend. We're back. Okay, Miss Hannah's going to work on something because, you know, even in our world of electronics, sometimes things go bad. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> if you ever got a penny stuck in a VCR or a when Tori was little, did she poke stuff in the VHS? No, she never did that. Thank God. Well, Nicholas but did. But I know kids that did. <clears throat> he did. And one mm -hmm. time I paid $100 for somebody to open up the VHS and get out. At the, and it was because he had put a little part of his uh, car in there. So we're having a little trouble with our yeah. DVD player, but we'll get it worked out. When good electronics go bad. When good electronics like go bad. When good, what, good animals go bad or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to give away some things today. We just decided it's time to clean house, clean the table off. I'm going to ask a question, and we're going to give away <clears throat> the Goss tractor stuff first. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about 0% interest, and I gave you the name of two tractor companies in this area. One is Goss. I'm giving you part of the answer. The other one is up the road, and they both sell Kubota at 0% interest. If you can call me, 866-939-2329, and tell me, the two tractor companies, I just gave you one of them that sell Kubota right now, 0% <clears throat> for five years. That yeah. is pretty awesome. Yes. That is pretty awesome. Now, the next question is going to be about car dealers because we talked about two car dealers offering 0% interest. Both of them start with an F-O-R-D, and they are the two Ford dealerships that advertise here on ETC. One of them is right down the hill here. One of them's right up the road yonder. So if you can call me at 866-939-2329, you're going to win Jennifer Danner's. This is Small Town History, a tribute in the history of the Great Copper Basin. One of the dealerships is just as you turn to go into the basin. This is Jennifer's, it's her music, original music some great photos, some wonderful footage, and this gave her the idea to do the special that will be here on ETC this fall with she and Billy Wayne Chastain that I think people are going to be dying to see. It is going to be great. It's going to be great. Have so, you seen that? <coughs> I have. This is, is Yes, absolutely. And it will open your I eyes. I want to see it. Well, it'll open mm -hmm. your eyes. You want to answer the question? <laughs> no, you can't. Shut up now. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> You can't answer pick the question. Me, pick me. <laughs> no. Where but can I get a copy of that? I'll then? get you a copy of okay. this. But call us at 866-939-2329 if you know the name of the two Ford dealerships. When we do parades, quite often I'm in a vehicle from the one down here at the bottom mm -hmm. of the hill. And I go to events like Customer Appreciation Day at the one up the hill. So if you can call me and tell me the name of the Ford dealerships, and they are both offering 0% interest right now. Ricky Morgan knew that it is Mason Tractor and Goss Tractor. There you go. And he wins the Kubota hats and the tag. Mm -hmm. And if you can now tell me about the Ford dealerships, because they are offering 0% even on that hot new Mustang. So there you go. A lot going on um, now with jobs. I and if think you, you, you when love it, you want to watch it. <laughs> I want to watch it with you. <laughs> there you go. It does. It does interest me. It, really it is does. very good. So yeah, I'd it's like interesting. to see it. Yeah. We'll get you a copy of it. Madeline Zimmerman <laughs> knew that this is North Georgia Ford is North Market and Ronnie Thompson Ford is mm -hmm. South Market. Good, good guys who who do a good job employing people in these in these communities yes. we serve. Employing people is what it's all about. RNA Orchards has been employing people for four generations. I, know. I was lucky enough to grab shade, we grabbed a camera, and we went out to RNA where I got to make biscuits. One of my favorite things ever. I got to make a strawberry cobbler. Did you pick the strawberries? Or Are you crazy? Are you? Are you crazy? You think I'm going to sweat? They have somebody that picks them, or is there a machine? Somebody, now that somebody, does it? and you I mean, get to see that. I mean, you know, now so much technology, there are machines no, that pick. No, hand picked. Wow. Right here in Gilmer County. And they fourth, were delicious. They are delicious. Fourth generation RNA orchards. We're going to show you. This is the world's simplest recipe. This is the best strawberry it cobbler you ever put in your mouth. 
strawberries, Sprite, butter, sugar, and flour. It can't get any easier than that. Right mm -hmm. now, we're going to go to the footage at RNA Orchards. Welcome to RNA Orchards in gorgeous Gilbert County. Now I'm with one of the owners and the worker bees here at RNA Orchard. Jennifer, what beautiful strawberries. What great strawberries. This is your first year doing this. And I have this great idea. I've done this simple, simple recipe. Everything you do here is homemade, hard to do. I'm going to simplify your life. I'm going to share a recipe with you. We took some of your fresh from the field strawberries and we basically, no effort, washed them and cut the tops off. If they were large strawberries, then I cut them in half. That's it. Isn't that hard? Can you do that? Yes. <laughs> you can do that. I'm thirsty. Are you thirsty? Yeah. Uh -uh, no, 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 you can't drink that. That's part of the recipe. I was going to get you to get us a Diet Coke. <laughs> now, Jennifer, at home, my dish is a little bit deeper, so I might use one bottle and a half of this. This is a 20-ounce Sprite. This is the only sugar that goes on the strawberries. You know what gave me this idea? Have you ever seen the movie Pretty Woman? Richard Gere tells Julia Roberts that strawberries and shampoo bring out the essence. Well, I'm a non-drinker, so I bring out the essence with strawberries and Sprite. So there you go. Now the crust for this is only butter, pure butter, and now watch this. You know how I measure? I don't. Some sugar, some flour, but if you'll notice, I'm doing equal amounts of sugar and flour. The crust is two sticks of butter, equal amounts of sugar and flour. And it gives it a little bit of a crunchy taste, not heavy, and not dry. And it is so good. Now, you see how the consistency is? Okay, we need a little bit more sugar. We need a little bit more flour. And this, this will probably make enough for two of these. And I'll be honest with you, this one won't last 15 minutes. When it comes out of the oven, don't you have Mayfield ice cream here? Oh, yeah. I see a little Mayfield ice cream going on with a <laughs> strawberry copper. Now, first year raising strawberries, any surprises? Very Everything looks great. They are beautiful. Now, this is about the consistency. We tell people we want it to be like thick cream potatoes. So it's pretty much like thick cream potatoes. Isn't this hard? Have you seen me measure anything? Have you seen me plan anything? Did this look like anything you could do? I think you can do this. I think your kids can do this. And I said, that's the simple thing about this recipe. A child can go home and prepare dessert for mom. Now, the strawberry season will be how long? Through this month. Okay, only this month. So May, come out to RNA Orchards and pick yourself up homegrown. I mean, my gosh, they're grown in the backyard. This is like going out in your backyard and picking strawberries. This is incredible. This is going to be a simple, easy, fast dessert that you could take on a picnic, or you could prepare. You could put this in the oven. How long does your preacher preach? <laughs> if it's over an hour, it won't work. <laughs> we got to have more than 45-minute preachers because this will take about 45 minutes in the oven at between 385 and 400, depending on your oven. But talk about good and talk about fast. And, and it's something that everybody has these ingredients. And, and to be honest with you, I have used sugar-free Sprite before. I don't like it quite as much, but if you want to do that, to leave out that sugar, you can do that. Now, in order to make RNA orchards work, you have some really worker bees in this kitchen who wash them, cut them, make fried pies, do homemade chicken salad, the best homemade chicken and dumplings in the world. Um, this is a family-owned business for generations. Yes, amazing, amazing. And how awesome it is that your children can work here at home too because your children are also in on the house. Now, can you throw this in the oven for me and we're gonna let it cook. See how simple that was? And we can thank Richard Gere for this idea because when he told her champagne, champagne brings out the essence, I think Sprite brings out the essence. Right now, we're gonna stick this in the oven and we're gonna be back with a very good, very ready cobbler in just a short time.
I love that. That so was now we're a hungry. fun day. And I'm thinking that hot cobbler looked oh, so good. My mouth is salivating. And I made a huge pan of biscuits. And I understand that Andy Fetch ate four biscuits. Well, I'm hey. glad you liked them. Nothing I did wrong it with that. Well, I did it without my Crisco. I always use Crisco for biscuits, and mm -hmm. they didn't have it. They just had a regular commercial shortening. And I used that, but it was it was a fun, fun day. And thank you very much for opening their doors to us. That was a lot of fun, and I really it was kind of one of my favorite work days. That yeah, was fun. I'm sure. Well, tomorrow at the bike ride, we're going to have a little contest. And this started because I've been cleaning out, going through, honestly not getting rid of, but looking at how can I possibly keep all the things I've accumulated. And I have every program we have ever produced here. I have a copy of it, and then multiples on many of them. Pictures. Some of them we missed. Maybe some of them, yeah. Some handful. of them we had a few glitches. Yeah. But I have so many photographs of you, of your yards, <coughs> of your houses, of your gardens, of your pets. I've got pictures of all of y'all. So tomorrow, we're gonna, I'm gonna pick out about a hundred of them, and we're gonna have them sitting everywhere. And then there's gonna be my favorite photograph will be in there. Well, my fa favorite photograph for a long time has been one certain picture. And then when I started going through these, I found one I liked even better. I'm not in it. Nobody that you would expect would be in it is in it. But I kept looking at this photograph and I thought, wow, wow. So I think I've changed my mind. Tomorrow we will do a little contest. If you choose the photograph that is my favorite, then you will win dinner for two at Wolf Creek Canyon Barbecue. That's some good groceries. That's some good groceries. So um, I want to go through some of the photographs now. It, now, y'all, I am really up against a wall right now because I don't know what's on this disc. I went through my desk drawer. Now, that one is at, where is that? Oh, oh, bell buckle. I will love this one. This is one I'll be comfortable with. This is some of my favorite food ever. That is their famous strawberry shortcake. They make a grits cake. They make a moon pie hot fudge sundae. That's what I was wanting that to is see. One of, that is their peach cobbler. Now, I will tell you right now, my peach cobbler is better. That's my dinner. That is my dinner. I had turnip greens, meat, slaw, cream corn, and yes, y'all, I sinned and I had a piece of fried cornbread. There is nothing like fried cornbread. But the Barker brothers were there with us. We actually went there to watch them. There's the Davis family from here in L.J., Georgia. They will be with us tomorrow, I would say, at the benefit because they like to hear the Barker Brothers sing. We're going to have the Barker Brothers, the Kaler family, the Partons, Notorious Norris, um, Little Triple Refuge, Shot. Triple Shop. We're going to have six groups tomorrow starting early in the morning. A lot of folks like particular groups, like particular bands, like particular songs. Angela, can we talk a little bit about the song that was written for you? Um, it was written from a friend of mine that I actually haven't seen since high school. Right. If that tells you anything, but you know, life takes you, and before you know it, so many years ago, by. <laughs> That's right. So anyway, he so, he sends me an email and he said, if you don't mind, I've written a song. This is Earl Thomas Conley's yard. I got to tell you all this. There you go. Okay, go I ahead. I can't believe that. Here's Earl Thomas Conley's house. <laughs> Okay. And he just said, I want to, you know, I want to play it for you at the benefit. And I said, okay. I said, can I see the lyrics? And he said, it's called Angela Smile. And he sent me the lyrics and I read them and I read them to Kathy and to Jimmy. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that it, it's perfect. That's awesome. It's such a nice, nice song. And I thought, wow, you know, I haven't seen him, but he pegged me. Exactly. Uh -huh. And it's just really, really great, so I can't wait to hear it. That's going to yeah. be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Well, this, this trip was an awesome trip up to Bell Buckle, Tennessee, and, and I have to tell you, we had front row tickets to see Miss Loretta Lynn on Memorial Day weekend. <coughs> Miss Loretta Lynn's ranch has been devastated by the storms. The bridge that was at her property from 1911 has been destroyed. Oh, the really? concert has been canceled. So my front row tickets were refunded. I don't want the money back. I wanted to see Loretti, so oh I'm really gosh. upset. But we, we still From have... From all the rain? Yes. Yeah. We still have front row tickets to the July event. They hope to have that event up and going. Now, they are the Barker Brothers. They will be with us tomorrow. One fine family who, who does show up and show out this Sunday. They will be showing up, and you will be showing out with some great food here on Boardtown Road, Salem Baptist Church. 
guarantee you the food will be incredible, the music will be incredible. It will be a great day of music and fellowship. So they have two gigs this weekend. They have two gigs this oh weekend. Oh my gosh, Quite they're going to be busy. They have three gigs. There's Wesley. Congratulations wow. to graduate. Wesley is graduating from high school and Jeremy Barker, congratulations, he graduated from college and is moving on to his next college gig. So mm -hmm. there you go. These are <laughs> exceptional kids who do so much and, and, and really overachievers, I would say, big overachievers. Mm -hmm. They do uh, a lot of stuff for a lot of people and they will be showing up and showing out for us tomorrow afternoon. What's this? This is the street going into Bell Buckle when oh. we were following the GPS trying to find a hotel and I'll tell you about that. Sometimes what you see is not what you get. We got a great deal uh, at a microtel up in Manchester, I think. Mm. Good place, nice people, and they gave us a discount, so we really like that. Yay. Right now we're going to go to some music by the Barker Brothers. They're going to be with us tomorrow. Some of the major sponsors of tomorrow's event. Um, Brenda Evans Design, Keys Jewelry, The Party Shop Paradise, Jasper Drugstore. So many people have helped. And more on Monday, furniture. more furniture. You will have the a Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. Thank and you. Jasper thank is you giving to the Dairy Queen and Jasper. Lots of yeah, buns. Lots of stuff. So thank you to each and every person. On Monday, we will do a completely alphabetical thank you because yes. so many people There's have made this many. possible. The Barker Brothers um, said absolutely we will do this and we will be there for you to support you and your child. So thank and you Lisa a bunch. And Lisa Kaler, so sweet. Lisa the Kaler, Kaylers are love gonna be the there. Kaler family. They will be there. Right the now, Partons. we're going to go and the Partons can't wait to hear the Partons. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to some music by the Barkers. I think this is the one probably filmed at Charlene's. It's either at Charlene's house or the Methodist Church. I'm not sure. At Charlene's house, um, Charlene and the Blue Star has been instrumental in helping us get this together. Thank you to everybody. Um, tomorrow is the day that we hope to lift you in spirit and to, to get mm -hmm. you on your road to recovery. I woke up this morning and I thought, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Gosh, right it, now, let's go months. to the Barker Brothers and sit back and enjoy this local family doing some great music. Down south, over land in the pines, running my way into North Carolina, staring up the road, pray to God to see the headlines. I prayed it down the coast in 17 hours, pick me a bucket of flowers, open for all the I can see my baby tonight. So rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel, rock me, mommy. Guitar, I play the banjo now. Open up, try to win, it's keep forgetting me now. I lost some money playing poker, had up and leave, but I ain't turning back, playing that old life no more. So rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama. Mama like the 
wind in the rain Rock me mama like a southbound train Something tells me I may know you as a lover and a friend. But this voice keeps whispering in my other ear, tells me I may never see you again. Cause I've got We're back. We are ending this week of talking a lot about health issues. Last week was the Relay for Life mm -hmm. in Pickens County, so obviously we had to talk about cancer. This week is the Relay for Life tonight in the Copper Basin, mm -hmm. beginning there at the Steel Bridge of the Nifty 50. I chose somebody to be with me today. I was with her the night we knew something was wrong with her mom. When I came on the air here, probably nobody was a bigger cheerleader for me than your mom. Miss Hazel loved me. She doted on me. She spoiled me. 
She corrected me when I needed corrected. She sometimes would jump on my case, and I loved her. And everybody knew how much I loved her. This week has to end talking about your mama. We were together on Sunday night having dinner. She didn't feel well, ended up in the hospital. And tell us what happened, Regina. Well, she, she actually, that was, that was on Sunday night, I believe. It was. And then she, she felt bad, but you know, mother, she's gonna, she was the a trooper. A little on the stubborn side, we will <laughs> say this. A little on the stubborn side. But it was for other folks, you know. That right. She lived her life in service, and she had a, a neighbor who had been really sick and had passed away and had actually been to her funeral and wouldn't do anything about herself. She had to take care of that first, you uh -huh. know. And so that afternoon, she ended up in the doctor's office. He sent her to the hospital for, for some uh, x-rays and, and tests and thought maybe that she had a, a bad gallbladder. Mm -hmm. So uh, they called me when she got there and, and we you know, got her taken care of and what, what started out to be gallbladder and eventually had her gallbladder uh, out ended up being more than that, more than, more than gallbladder. It actually ended up being pancreatic cancer. So uh, that, was, um, that was quite a shock because, you know, you come in and you think it's one thing and you find out it's something else. And it's, it's a progression that you have to go through mm -hmm. with the testing and everything. And you learn a lot. It's an education. It is an education. You, you learned, we learned that, you know, pancreatic cancer does not have to be fatal. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's in a certain area of the pancreas, it's treatable. And we and, can say Michael Landon had pancreatic. Right. Patrick Swayze had pancreatic. Well, and see, all this happened at the same time that, right. that, that right. uh, Patrick Swayze was diagnosed within weeks of, mm -hmm. they were diagnosed within weeks of each other. His was on the, on the other, right. on the other end and from hers, and so consequently hers was not treatable. Mm -hmm. It was, they did everything they could to make her comfortable, and basically that's what they, they mm -hmm. told her, you know, mm -hmm. we're gonna, we're gonna treat you as best we can and keep you comfortable and hope, you know, that you've, uh, you've got some time. And she did. She had 16 weeks from the day of surgery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we lived life as best we could, those 16 yeah. weeks, as you we well had know. All. We had them we all. Did. Yeah, we, we did. We did. I guess it's the only time in her life that she's ever eaten anything that she could eat, you yeah. know, because she, yeah. this woman watched every bite that went in her mouth, my mouth, your uh, mouth, everybody uh, else's mouth. She did. That's the <laughs> truth. Right. You know, and was very conscious of this, and not only did she watch it, she, you know, she right. held court over it uh, most yeah. of the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, right. But she was able, you know, the things that she could eat. She wanted to she, eat. She, she enjoyed it. Eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She did eat. And, and we, uh, we took it one day at a time, and mm -hmm. if she felt good that day, we had a good day. If she didn't, we moved on to the next day and, and right. dealt with it. Mm -hmm. Well, yesterday you called and asked me to ask prayer for a special lady, and we today that's what this is all about. Sheila is your niece. Sheila is my niece. And yes. my beautiful lost, niece. She lost her husband at a very young age to cancer. Now, about 13 years later, she has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Yes. Now tell us a little bit about her and why you love her so much. I know that she's the mom of a policeman, the wife of a firefighter. Opposite. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why is she so spe special to you? Sheila is a fighter. I mean, she was widowed at 34 years old. Uh -huh. She had a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and an 11-year-old mm -hmm. Wow. that she had to raise. What kind of cancer did he have? He had uh, lung and leukemia in okay. stage four oh my when they found it. Found it on uh, Memorial Day weekend. They were at the at the beach with three more families, you know, as families go to the beach mm -hmm. together, you have fun mm -hmm. together, you know, and he just becomes sick suddenly. She brings him back to Atlanta on Sunday from the beach. His doctor, uh, because he was good about having checkups and all this, his doctor was at Northside in Atlanta, checked him, had him checked out in the ER. He came on to the hospital when they got the results. That was Memorial Day weekend. He never went home. Wow. In the hospital. Oh my gosh. Passed away in, in August, you know, and, and lived for that from that point of time with and her they were the same age. He was thirty four too. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, she became a widow at thirty four, raising those children, you know, thinking, Hey, this is you know, this is it, I've got these children to raise. Fortunately, God knew there was somebody else out there. And 
this husband is, he has just been fantastic. Tim Binding is an awesome, awesome guy. He's with her today. Her surgery is today. Mm -hmm. He's with her. They're together. Uh, they've asked for no visitors until gets get the surgery over with. We'll deal with this. You know, we'll we'll do the mm -hmm. things that we feel like are important. Their pastor is with them. You know, they're, they're doing this together. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully they feel like they've caught this early enough that her right. chances and early detection. Early, early, detection. early detection. She told me a couple of weeks ago we were talking, I was coming home from, from work and we were talking and she hadn't felt good. She's been dealing with a, another thing called uh, scleroderma, where that's the hardening of the skin and you go through all that. And she says, I just she says there's so many side effects from that, I just don't feel good. And I said, Well you just need to see the doctor. Uh -huh. You know, we need to get this taken care of. So she said, I'm gonna make an appointment. I said I, I'm not your mama, but I'm your aunt, and I'm telling you, you got to right. take care of this. Uh -huh. So, uh, so she did, she did, but she didn't. Her appointment was not, you know, how it is trying to get an appointment. Her appointment was for an, another couple of weeks. Well, she just was just bent double in pain Ooh. a few days ago, and they, he, Tim, came in. What's going on? She told him. He says, "We're taking you to the emergency room." She mm -hmm. said, "I don't think I can wait. I need to see somebody." Right. And they did. Uh -huh. They did. Right. And fortunately. It's amazing the tests they can run and the, the results they can find and how fast you can move on things mm -hmm. if you'll just, you know, take the initiative to, to do that. And mm -hmm. she did. And so we're, we're in prayer. We're just mm -hmm. lifting her up and just know that it's going to be. And the surgery is this morning? It's at 1.30 today. 1.30 today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we awesome. please, please. Keep Please her. pray for her. In, yeah. in, in your prayers. She She's at Northeast Georgia okay. in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. okay. And Northeast Georgia is one of the best. It has a great reputation for heart and cancer. And I am just so grateful to the doctors, the medical staff that's there, the team mm -hmm. that's with her for staying on top of this and uh -huh. saying, you know, we time we're not gonna waste any time on this. We're gonna move. Uh -huh. Right. You know, yeah, sort of even that's down to getting fast. an operating room mm -hmm. set up and all that because mm -hmm. people, unless you work in, in health care, so, yeah. yeah, unless you're in yeah. health care, you don't know how things have to have uh, to go, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the work that has to be done to make this possible. It's a it's a oh, God yeah. thing, as oh, I yeah. say, oh, you know, yeah. that, hey, his yeah. hands on yeah. this, he's, he's in control. Yeah. So. Now, how old are her children right now? Uh, let's see. Twenty-four. Twenty-six. 16 and 19. So still has a child in school. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Still an active mom doing a lot of things with the kids. Busy, busy, busy. Not only do, do they have the three that they're raising, Tim had two children. And they're uh, one's in college, one's graduating. I mean, it's just, you know, and this is a blended family that has worked. It amazes me. That's mm -hmm. awesome. You know, even down to the the two stepchildren live down the street, or did uh -huh. live down the street from them. Everybody's oh, everybody works together, and and they're very supportive. His family mm -hmm. has already called. He is originally from Wisconsin. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's with Gwinnett County uh, Police Sheriff's Department and okay. uh, investigator. Just a, a great, great, great guy. And then we're so proud of Drew, her son. He is a DeKalb County fireman, the youngest DeKalb County fireman. Just finished up his training and everything. Youngest DeKalb County fireman to be wow. hired in, out of this year's class. Oh, That's right. awesome. We're proud That's of awesome. him. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we do want to ask prayer. I know when Regina called me yesterday, it's important to you. We know what prayer can do. We know what friends and family can do. When your mom was sick, everybody came on board. Her house got to the point the refrigerator wouldn't hold any more food. The freezer wouldn't hold any more food. The sink wouldn't hold any more food. There was nowhere to put any more food. People really do show up and show out, don't they? The community responded even down to she got to where she didn't want to eat because she, she had to eat by herself. We had somebody that stayed with her who was a godsend in herself. But she would cook breakfast and it was like, okay, who's going to eat with her this morning? So she'll eat, yeah, you know. Yeah. Who's going over at lunch, you know. And, and whether she ate one bite or cleaned her plate. Somebody mm -hmm. was there to make sure that she, you know, was right. was taken care of and that she right. had had company. Mm -hmm. You know, we in the South we like to have company. We do. Yeah. Yeah. You we know, do. we love it. It's just so much more special when mm -hmm. there's somebody there. That's one of the things um, I wanted to ask you about. You have been to the community meal with me. Oh and yes. You, and you know what it means to see these elderly people walk in who normally might be at home having a bowl of cereal alone because it isn't fun to eat alone. Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. And, and they would join together there and you see friendships forged. Now you and David White talk all the time, 
as you drive, he talks. As he drives, you talk. Mm -hmm. Y'all just, mm -hmm. and, and it's a friendship based mm -hmm. from the community meal. And, and that's true, that's true. And, and we met David, it's really interesting the way David, you know, has sort of come into our lives. And he's a wonderful human being. David talks me home yeah, a lot does. of nights. You know, I had a friend, as you know, that I lost the week that my mama was diagnosed. Right. That talked me home. It didn't matter if I was in Timbuktu and it was midnight. George was on the phone. George was mm -hmm. on the phone and he'd say, are you in the driveway yet? Are uh -huh. you okay? You know, that kind of thing. Right. You don't forget people like that. Right. I said, yeah. that meal, that community meal is as much here, have a bite of food, bless your heart. Yeah. Right. You know, it's, yeah. the, it's that mm -hmm. kind of feeling that you get. You walk away from there. And I mean, it's the salt of the earth people mm -hmm. that you meet and you develop friendships with. And, mm -hmm. and you know, you, you think about them. They're on your prayer list, you mm -hmm. know. Their needs, the, the, the troubles that they have, the things that go on in their lives. Just like this, they have family members who are ill. Mm -hmm. You know, they become on your prayer list. Right. Mm -hmm. They become the people you pray for and that you, you know, you care about. And, uh, right. you know, it, it, my daddy said one time, if you prayed for everybody that, that you think about during the day, if you prayed for them at night, you'd be up all night. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know. And that's, that's all right. That's, sometimes that's what I say, God, for. you know our needs. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't go to bed. You know, he, he's <laughs> no. awake. You know, he yeah. hears everything, whether it's verbalized or whether it's internalized. Right. He still knows. Right. Now, we've got another family member of yours we need to ask prayer for. Hugh, how's he doing? Doing good. Good, good. Doing well, good. Well, he and Jean are special, special people. Yes, they are. And we hope they'll get to retire to Augusta area somewhere closer. We hope they get to retire. Yeah. You know, this stuff. I mean, they're, they're retired now, but, you know, we'd like to have them, have them close. Well, he was the CEO here at the hospital. Years yeah. ago, wasn't he? Jasper. He was yeah. the first full-time. The first full-time CEO of Piedmont. Was it Pickens General Hospital then? It was Hospital Pickens then? General then. That was 1969. Yeah. 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 And we and we want to say, um, we lo I love when they come to town. They're both very positive, positive people. And uh, Jean was a nurse. Is that right? Jean was a nurse. So yes, she's been she, in the medical she's profession. Still a nurse. This she's is the week honoring, we are honoring nurses. We are honoring people in the medical profession. And they are both cancer survivors. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and that's the word we want to use. Regina, hand me that shirt. This is this is the slogan and the logo for cervical cancer. Supporting the fighters, admiring the survivors, honoring the taken, and never ever giving up hope. If you can call me at 866-939-2329, we're going to give you this shirt. I'm going to ask you a question about Talk of the Town. Mm -hmm. Last night, Christy featured people from a certain market in this area. If you can tell me who was Christy honoring last night, call me at 866-939-2329. And Angela, we're giving away one of your shirts. That's there you go. And, dandy. and we want to say thank you to Ronnie Thompson Ford. They just brought us a gift card for a free oil change. This is valued at about $35. Oh, so no. thank you very, very much. Yes. We have gone through a lot together. We have um, cried some, prayed some, screamed some, laughed some. We have laughed a lot. We've laughed a lot. We have laughed a lot. We, we, we have traveled many miles. We have traveled many miles. Do you remember <laughs> when we made reservations for the Nifty 50? <laughs> the and we, first time when neither of us had ever been. Never been there. And we showed up a day late <laughs> because we were going up 515 and I said, Regina, you got plans tonight? She said, no. I said, well, we headed to Pigeon Forge. We, we headed. We to Pigeon went Forge. to McKaysville by way of Pigeon <laughs> Forge. Right. So y'all, when people tell you you just can't get there from here, just call me. I will tell you how to get there from here. Mm -hmm. We've and what about y'all's little first night at the uh, campground site when the oh gosh we have we ever told that story on the air we gotta tell y'all this we gotta tell y'all this everybody knows that I am not an experienced camper my idea of camping is the Holiday Inn my idea of camping is the Hampton Inn with a very nice suite I am not a camper as well it should be no as well it should be the first time I had a motorhome. Well, I can't drive. Which can't is drive. just like the the Holiday Inn. Yeah, my, you know? the motorhome is very nice, yes, but it's I very can't nice. I can't drive it. I'm very intimidated by it. Regina's cousin Mike Holcomb came to Jasper, got my motorhome, and drove it to Bryson City, North Carolina, for us. All is good. Regina and I drive up to Bryson City to spend the weekend. Excited to death. Excited. And, and I'm going to join them the next day or so. And we're so excited, y'all. We're so excited. And keep in mind, I'm not a camper. I know nothing about camping. 
So we get there and, and we're looking and, and the water has to be hooked up on the outside to a water hose. Mm -hmm. Well, we hook up the water to the water hose. Now, you got to keep in mind, Regina and I are also pro shoppers. And Belks in Waynesville, North Carolina, has a red carpet that they only put out when she and I show up. <laughs> and when we show up, we always would drive the big Suburban empty. And we would always leave, and I promise you it's the truth, from the seat, from the back of the driver's seat to the very back of the vehicle, it's cram packed full. I mean, we shop. That's what they make outside mirrors for because you can't see. No, you can't see. <laughs> we are, once a year, we shop a holic at Belks in Waynesville, North Carolina. So as we're getting the motor home ready and we're looking in the mirrors and looking in the cabinets and the refrigerators working, and I'm excited because this is like camping my style, a very nice motor home. Regina says, You want to carry it from here? Turn the water on. Turn the water on. She says, it's not on. I says, oh, yeah, I know how to do it. I'll go outside and I'll fix it. I know how to do this. We used to have She's a camper. She's a camper, not me. We had the self-contained camper. I can do this. My husband was a, was a plumber, a pipe fitter. He used to do this. He showed me how. You can do this? Yes. Yes. So I go outside and I cut the water on, proceed to cut the water on, because on ours it had a thing that until you used it, it didn't come on. It didn't fill up anything, you know. Mm. So, needless to say, we cut it on and we go on our little shopping, shopping trip. And not only do we go to Belts, but we come back by this antique store where Sherry proceeds to buy this bucket. Big bucket, y'all. Big bucket. Bucket like you would use in the, your grandmother would have used in the garden to pick a lot. Yes. Of big beans. bucket. Paid $35 for the big bucket. And Regina looked at me and said, what are you going to do with that bucket? And I said, well, I don't know, but it's interesting. It's just an interesting bucket. The story goes on. And I laughed and I said, well, that'll be good. I can get in and out of things, you know, turn it upside down. You can step right. up on it and get in. thought they'd make a great step. So we, we take our bucket back with us and, and we pull in the campsite to which this guy says, I think you all have a little problem. <laughs> Remember, yeah. little problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was not. And, and, we, and we forgot to tell y'all, this is 4th of July weekend when every campsite is it's full. full. And they have now proceeded. Here's our motor Was it home. 4th of July or Memorial? 4th of July. Mm -hmm. Because they were having the singing in the Oh, side. yeah. You know, oh, that's yeah. what we that's went right. up. Oh, yeah. Here's the motor home. And right beside us are people camping in tents and I'm thinking when we leave there it's going to be noisy because they're camping those people right beside our motorhome. So we pull up and there are people going <laughs> like this and they're looking Don't under the motorhome. <laughs> and we open the door and they said, <laughs> lady, you got a problem. And I said, what's the problem? And they said, <laughs> we open the door to the motorhome and it's full of water. <laughs> The motorhome, the carpet. Comes out as you open the door. The cabinets, <laughs> the walls. It's all full of water because we left the valve on because I wasn't married to a plumber or a pipe fitter. Right. We didn't have a cutoff valve. We did not. Regina, did not. what did we do with that bucket? <laughs> oh, let me tell you. Not only was the, the floor full of water, the bathtub was full. Everything in the bathroom, you know, I mean, the water's up this high beside the bathtub, not just in the bathtub. We bailed water for the next two Hours. and a half. Hours. We were late for the singing, and we get there, and they <laughs> want to know where we've been, and they didn't believe us when we said we were bailing water. You know, <laughs> that was oh, yeah. just a made-up excuse. Oh, we yeah. were truly bailing I water. I know you were. We, bailed we got there, and, and it was still wet. And what was so bad was, for every bit you would take out, it's so heavy, you're struggling right. to get up the, the camper with and get it out. You come back and your bathtub is half full again, you know, right. it, it just keeps coming. Right. Nobody ever said go out there and, you know, <laughs> cut it off because <laughs> it's gonna, you know, it's just gonna keep coming. I mean, it's like, the more we bail, the more we go. <laughs> <laughs> now, now y'all, we gotta, we gotta tell you, we, we slept in the wet camper. Every time we walked through the carpet, it was squish, 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 squish. It was hysterical. I put her in the bed, and y'all gotta think about this, I don't sleep in daylight. I have this problem. So I put Regina in the queen size bed in the back bedroom where she can close the door. It's totally dark. She's very, very comfortable. Except for wet feet. Except for wet feet because when you get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, squish, 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 squish. So I decide I'm going to sleep on the sofa that pulls out and makes the bed. Well, 
right in front of us, and you have to remember, Mike, Hawk and Park the Motorhome for us, on the main road going into Bryson City. Now, for y'all who don't know, Bryson City is also seven miles from Cherokee, North Carolina, where everybody gambles. Mm -hmm. And on a holiday weekend, the whole world gambles. And motorcycles. <coughs> motorcycles all night long. So I'm sleeping. That's a, that's a word I don't use much. <laughs> I'm sleeping. I'm not sleeping. I'm laying on this couch bed. And in front of me is this window that is a big glass window and I, I'm all night long people's lights are in my eyes and I'm laying there staring at these lights all night long did not close my eyes the next morning Regina comes out of the bedroom squish 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 she said how did you sleep I said I haven't been asleep yet the lights kept me up all night she walks over pulls down the shade and said why didn't you pull the shade <laughs> I didn't know it had a shade. <laughs> this was a new motorhome. I had no idea. I didn't know its bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. So we had fun. We laughed. We've told the story a thousand times. Every time I would go up to the campsite after that, a little man named Walter worked in the store. <laughs> About my third trip up there, I was checking in, and I looked at the map of the thing, and I said, Walter, you have a pool here at the campsite. He said, <laughs> you don't need a pool. You've got one in your motorhome. I said, that is not funny. He said, lady, it's funny every time I tell it. The whole campground. And they tell the world. They have told uh, the world. They have this told story the world about these idiot women from Georgia who didn't know, and you have to remember, we're not big campers. We knew nothing about camping, but we have entertained much of the Carolinas. We have, we have yeah. entertained them. And We've the people at Belks love us. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the people know. at Belks love us. Oh, but we have had so many miles and so much fun together. <laughs> a lot of good memories, a lot of sad memories, a lot of crazy memories, a lot of things we look back and say, can you believe we did that? I know. <laughs> and we did I it. Knew that. We did it. And we've had so much fun. So. We, have, we, have, uh, we have filmed, we have improvised our mm -hmm. filming. Heart of the Home goes to Pigeon Forge to film. And Lori Tipton, God love her soul, forgot the lighting. Well, men would have gotten a credit card out and gone to Home Depot and oh bought God. lighting. We decided to go through the condo we're staying in, take every light, every lamp, and assemble it near the dining room table. Take the chandelier and, and catty corner it and prop it up with a broom. That was your idea, wasn't it? A stool it? with the broom run through the, the legs of the stool to give it, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. leverage. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then the other end is, is holding up the the chandelier that's pointed uh -huh. at the them uh -huh. in, in their cooking. Worked well. Worked well. Right. <laughs> now when the preacher when the preacher came in to eat dinner with us and the table was full of a stool and the lamps and the broom, he kinda went, What's for dinner? And we said, oh, Well, we may have to eat on our laps today because the table ended up being mm -hmm. our lighting source. That's but right. we, we improvised and that's we laughed right. and we had fun. Now that was also the same trip that we were sitting in Pigeon Forge in the parking lot of Walmart and some woman hit us. She hit us and then she hit us again. She backed <laughs> into us and then she backed up and hit us again. And Regina said, That sounds going, like Granny's wreck. Regina says, I think they're going to hit us. And I said, Surely not. You can't see this big black car. Blam. Regina says, They're going to hit us again. Blam. <laughs> she hits us again. And we're just kind of sitting there, and we said, lady, did you not see the big black car? <gasps> no, I didn't. Okay, funny. it was funny. It was it funny. It was funny. It was funny. Yeah. We have had a ball. <laughs> we have had a ball. It was not funny when I was out directing traffic in my high heels <laughs> and my, I had one of those boa scars that they had just come oh, out with, you know, funny. they were making with all the, and funny. I'm out with my friend Joan in my high heels and you come here and you come here and I thought, hey, we got new policemen in, in <laughs> Pigeon Forge, you know, this is strange, but oh, Lord. <laughs> we, had, we had a good time. We, we had really a ball. Had, all in all, it was a mm. lot of fun. We had a ball. We have had so much fun. Today, we want to encourage you to make memories. Make memories with the people who matter to you. Make memories with the people who you want to remember because we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Miss Hazel had 16 weeks after the diagnosis. 16 weeks. Now, not many people know that I used to clean Miss Hazel's house. Miss Drusilla and Miss Hazel would sit in the kitchen drinking coffee while I was the little worker bee. And she would write me a check, and I can still see that check like it was yesterday. She had the most beautiful handwriting. I cleaned a three-bedroom, two-bath, big brick house for $12.50. Your mama was one of my very first friends when I came to Jasper. I lived two doors down from her. You were a young baby. I mm -hmm. needed the money. I worked three jobs, and I cleaned your mama's house. Um, 
never stopped loving her, never stopped caring about her, and we had a 40-year relationship. That's something that you just, I will treasure forever and ever and ever. And she was a big, she, she was a big part of what made me want to be me, because she would say, you can do it, you can do it. And she had that belief about everybody you know mm -hmm. it didn't matter if you were going to be a ditch digger you were going to be the best ditch digger there was that's right it didn't matter but she just she was an encourager mm -hmm. uh phyllis Poole told me once uh, phyllis you know from uh, uh chattahoochee tech mm -hmm. told me she said miss hazel was a pioneer woman pioneer professional woman before it was fashionable mm -hmm. oh that's right right yeah, to be. absolutely right. you know and right up to the end i mean yeah. you know the morning that she passed away they were doing her hair she might have been in a hospice facility but that hair was going to be fixed right. and she was going to have on her makeup because her kids and her her kid and her grandkids were coming to right. see her that that's day. right that's and right. she was putting her best face forward right well we want to show the other disc of photos um tomorrow at the benefit for angela we are going to show a lot of photos i've ever 10,000 photos. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got disc and disc and disc from Alaska to Florida to here. Many of them, many of these are of our viewers. And tomorrow, there are so many of our viewers who are not here anymore. There are yeah. so many of our guests who are not here anymore. We have lost some amazing people, many of them to cancer. Cancer is one of those things I hope you and I live to see this done away with. You know, the pill mm -hmm. that Dr. Oz was talking about to me is incredible that mm -hmm. instead of going through the chemo, I know what it did to mama, I know what it did to JS, mm -hmm. I know that chemo just rapes your body. I mean, absolutely is so bad. And and this pill could make a difference. And, and they told the 10 cancers it will help with. Today, there is a scientist somewhere, mm -hmm. sitting somewhere, yeah. who will cure cancer. I hope it's in my lifetime and your lifetime. Mm -hmm. We've lost way too many friends. Now, George lasted how long? from Tuesday until Sunday. Right, right. Well, we've got a problem with these photos, and I don't know why it's my favorite disc. I'm gonna cry. Oh. But, but we'll, <clears throat> next week I wanna feature the many of you that I have photographed. I've taken so many pictures of y'all. I've taken pictures of your gardens. I've taken pictures of your houses. Each one of you have, have become a memory to me. You know, just a little special sure. glippet. And, and when I said, I've chosen my favorite photograph, and if you pick it out of this group, you're gonna win dinner for two at the Wolf Creek Canyon Barbecue. Then I changed my mind. I changed from that photograph that has been my favorite to another one that I wasn't in, but it was of some special people. And I got to thinking about all the special people we've had on here. We've had over 1,800 guests. Mm -hmm. Over 1,800 guests, yeah. 1800 How is the little lady guests. that's 92 that had the beautiful flowers in her yard? She went in the hospital or she? Oh, uh, she's actually, I think, at home now. Okay, yeah. good. Because I've thought yeah. about her a lot. Yeah, she is so precious. And we did, I, and you know, her birthday was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I need to, we need to show mm -hmm. the photos of her again. Yeah. Miss Carla, she's one of those who comes to the meal who lives alone, quite often ate alone. And to be able to come in and have a meal and to be with people, that's part of what it's all about. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's part of what it's all about. So, um, and tomorrow we do want to encourage you to come and be with us. The Kaler family, the Parton family, the Barker brothers, mm -hmm. Notorious Norris. Triple shot, Little Refuge. And Little Refuge will be with us. Tomorrow will be a day to celebrate life. We're going to give away one more of Angela's shirts, and then we're going to give away one of my cookbooks. And we've got to do the birthday drawing. And I've got more know. birthdays. Oh, good. Do that. Yes, I've got Winston Davenport, 62 years old, on May 16th. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Earl Davenport on May 8th, 64 years old. Happy birthday. Samantha Payne, 11 years old, on May 11th. Happy oh. birthday. Happy birthday. Now, we've got to find out where the cake is. I don't know. <clears throat> this week, we've kind of gotten behind and. I kind of did a number on my buddy Denise, and I volunteered her. Um, Denise does great cake. She will be with us tomorrow bringing some of her goodies. Von Seal Moser's famous coconut cake will be with us tomorrow. Hello. Miss Farrell Starn's famous coconut cake will be with us tomorrow. Tomorrow, we encourage you to come join with us at Lawson Chevrolet. <gasps> Look at Miss Farrell Starn's. Come here a minute. Come here. Come oh, over speak, here. Speaking of, speaking of. Hey there. Hey, Miss Farrell. How are Sneaking you? The door. Now you just gave me a reason to ask a question. If you can, you're going to win my cookbook. If you can tell me the name of the business that is closing here in LJ, where Miss Farrell Starn's clothes come from, call me at 866-939-2329. If you can tell me the name of the business where quite often Miss Farrell Starn's clothes come from. Do you Thank think, you so much. Thank do you. Do you think people will care can we if I take you down a bite? here with us for a minute? We just got I a few have minutes. Cake oh, good! We have another cake coming! Yay! 
Yay, and here's our bride-to-be coming in here. Yay. Don't say something. Yes. Oh, my yes. Lord. Yes. Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This lady always you, has a smile. So Listen. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll just cool. take a corner out and then they will <laughs> never know. I'll just put a coconut back. Okay, Regina, what do you want? I was going to say, Miss Starnes always has a smile on her face and mm -hmm. she just kind of lights up the room when she, she walks does. in. My mom, there at the end, as, as you, you will remember this, I'm sure, she was, she was, you know, if you don't have anything else to give somebody that's sick or you think, well, I can't, I can't do them a lot of good, you can walk in and smile. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The doctor, right. after he had to give her her final diagnosis there, he said, is there anything else I can do for you? And she looked at him just as serious as she could be. She said, you can smile when you come in my room. And that smile means so much. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you, sometimes you don't have the words to say or you don't right. know what to say. But if you can just smile, I think that right. that's, mm -hmm. that's important mm -hmm. to, to folks, mm -hmm. no matter what the situation. That's right, right. because we are not guaranteed tomorrow. You and exactly. I aren't sitting here with a, a cancer diagnosis, but tomorrow we could be gone. You know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. I sure do hate to think I might be, though, with that coconut. <coughs> Lee Chastain oh. knew that Louis, Lois, Lois Chastain, Chastain, Lois Chastain, my buddy. She drove up the other day to meet me, and what an honor. That was so oh, cool. Nice. That was I so can't cool. believe I have Miss Starnes cakes here. Right here. <laughs> Not Yay. only one, but two. I'll do it, and it's L-O-Y-C-E, right? Yay. I will do that. This has been an incredible week. We began the week talking about Relay for Life in Jasper. I never thought my child would walk as a survivor. You mm -hmm. did uh, with your friend Hans. It was very strange, too. It was very strange. You, you always think about it. You know, oh yes, we'll volunteer or we'll do this and that, and then it hits you with the big C word, and you walk a lap as a survivor, and it's it's just it still hasn't sank in really, yeah. Because it's like you know Hans and I were talking about. You always think about sometimes that it's hiding somewhere else, and are you truly a survivor uh -huh. until you make it to the five years, or you know is it day by day? Right. So it's still One scary. It, yeah. it is still scary. I, I, not a day goes by that I don't think, is it somewhere else? If I don't feel good that day or whatever, I may be oversensitive about right. myself and what's going on inside. So you, you always worry about it. But yeah, it, it was surreal walking a lap as a survivor. That's amazing. It is neat. This week, um, we send prayers to each of you if you're fighting a fight, if you, if you are in the battle for your life with cancer, um, we're going to send prayers to you. Mm -hmm. and, and to your niece, Sheila, who is having surgery today, go Sheila, go Sheila. And Sheila please pray Bining. For, yeah, Sheila Bining, please pray for her, play, pray for her family. Yep. Her children lost their dad. They don't need to lose their mom. So, right. and we know that prayers are answered. Prayers are answered. Miss Farrell, thank you very much for bringing these cakes. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so much. Now, are you going to Sue's Log Cabin for lunch? I am. Okay, well, Angela's got to follow you out there and pick up potato salad and slaw for tomorrow's oh, event. So yes. there you go. Oh. I can't you. believe this. You're so precious. Thank you. <laughs> that is so, well, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I could eat this whole cake, but Miss Hannah says it's time to go, so we're going to go, and I'm going to eat this one, Angela's <laughs> eating this one. <laughs> We've got to draw the birthday drawing, and here we go, and we really don't know where the cake is from today, so we'll have to wing it. Uh, Avery Patterson, 82 years young. Happy, happy, birthday. happy birthday to Avery Patterson, our winner. And, you know, tomorrow is all about living. Please come and join with us, and once again, we will be back here Monday, as always, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10. From North Georgia Now Today, I'm Sherry Martin. I'm Angela Burgess, and we don't like to say goodbye, so we'll say see you later. See you later, only on ETC3. Regina, thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you, you Ms. Farrell, me. so much. Thank you, thank you. Please join us every Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10 a.m., 6 to 7.30 p.m., and 1 to 2.30 for you late-nighters. Don't forget, Rich Scott and Trading Time comes on right behind us, and he's going to tell you all about the yard sales in our area. Check us out only on ETC3.